Hey. Hey everybody, I'm Sensei Slink. Welcome back to Metal Gear Solid. <laughs> anyway, Chapter 10. Snake stepped into the knee-high snow and moved to the side of the open door, hugging the wall to stay out of sight. The code of beat. Snake glanced at it and was surprised to see that it was a non-bit transmission. That meant it wasn't from Campbell or the others. Who is this? He answered. A friend. It was a male voice, deep and controlled. Can you be more specific? Snake, you must be careful in the canyon. There are claymore mines planted at various locations. You have a mine detector? Yes. Who is this? Use the mine detector to pinpoint the claymore. Stay out of the range, sensory range. I know how to use it. Tell me who you are, damn it. Consider me a fan. You can call me Deep Throat. Like, I love how, like, Grey Fox literally does the exact same thing in Metal Gear 2. Like, right down to calling himself a fan. And, like, Snake doesn't think anything of it. Like, even after he finds out Grey Fox is still alive, like, he doesn't seem to realize that it's Grey Fox. <laughs> uh, Grey Fox is deep throat till, like, the end of the game. <laughs> till, till, till Grey Fox tells him at the end of the game. <laughs> anyway. The transmission clicked off. Snake attempted to bring up the frequency code of the last incoming call, but the digital readout simply read zero. What the hell? Nevertheless, if the fellow, fellow is being straight with him. <laughs> oh my god. He's not. Because you're not straight, David. Snake's life might have been saved. He opened the side pocket of the utility belt and removed the I'm Tech Pathfinder Path Tracker site 3000, a handy tool that located unexpected mines and bombs by picking up radio waves from various devices. Once the detonator detector scrambled a mine safety signal, the user could decide or detonate the explosive from a safe distance. Snake held the machine, which was the size of a deck of cards, and flipped it on. He extended the antenna and pointed it at the ground in front of him. The outlines of three claymore mines materialized on the screen. One was very close, about ten feet away from the hangar entrance. Two more were ten feet beyond that, nearly side by side. He would have to go get farther onto the field to detect any more. He turned the frequency knob and pointed the antenna at the spot where the first mine was buried. A green indicator light was supposed to fade when the explosive was designed, but nothing happened. Snake was unsure if the two feet of snow had it had an impact on the unit's functionality. Perhaps it had. The best thing to do would be to avoid the area altogether. Snake moved to the left side of the canyon and trudged toward the north along the rock cliff. The wind wasn't as strong and visibility was fading next to the wall. Could he cross the entire field by staying on that coise? <sighs> the answer came when the path tracker picked up a series of claymores blocking his way. Once again, he attempted to, to design them, but it, it was a no-go. He would have to prove back toward the center of the field to go around them, out where he would be a sitting duck. Snake put on his sun goggles to keep the wind out of his eyes, donned a pair of thermal gloves, and set out. It took nearly 20 minutes to make the journey to the center of the canyon. Most of the claymores had been concentrated in the first 50 yards, and now it seemed that the rest of the way was clear. Snake felt like Dr. Zhivago as he felt the high frigid wind and plodded forward. Who the frick is that? He could have used the wool scarf and now jacket, but not Dr. Hunter's nanomachines were doing a good job of keeping him, him warm. The worst part was the tedious chasing through the deep snow. It was hard to work from climbing a steep hill. This is Raven's territory. Snakes do not belong in Alaska. You shall not pass! The deep voice resonated through the air, carried by the wind. It came from a loudspeaker somewhere up ahead. Snake squinted through the goggles, the eyes, and made out. There's no eyes in that sentence. Through the goggles and made out a dark, bulky shape that was growing, growing larger. The Avon's tank was coming his way. Snake took the scope from his utility belt and focused it on the armored monstrosity. large 
man with a bird painted on his forehead sat in the dirt. No, it was a tattoo or a big one. Walking Raven, the shaman giant in the flesh. Before Snake could begin to plan a defensive strategy, the tank's 105mm M68 rifle gun fired a shell at him. The only thing he could do was save his head. Sounds like a mech gun. M76 moist. <laughs> Moist. <laughs> Moist. <laughs> uh, uh, the only thing he could do was leap sideways as high as he could and burrow himself as deeply into the snow as possible. The explosion knocked the world around him. He felt his body being lifted and then slapped into the air. He landed with a thud despite the snow's cushion. For a moment, Snake saw stars and there was a tremendously painful ringing in his ears. Woken Raven laughed boisterously. That's right, you should crawl on the ground like a snake you are. The voice reminded him where he was. Snake quickly took stock of his arms and legs and determined that everything was still there. He carefully flexed each appendage and was grateful that nothing had been broken or torn by shrapnel. The ringing in his ears subsided, but his mane just said he annoyed. He'd been damn lucky. The ground trembled beneath him. This time he heard the Abrams engine coming closer. And he heard the Abrams engine coming closer. This time, the tank's 12.7mm machine gun rattled the snow around him. If anything was going to make him move his ass, that was it. Snake got up and forced himself to leave the spot where he'd fallen. It was impossible to run. It was like walking through molasses. What was he going to do? Yet another lesson from Master Miller came back to him. It was an appropriate one, too, for it contained a battle between a man with a few defenses and a powerful giant. Do you remember the story of David and Goliath? Miller had asked the class of trainees. David was a young Israelite lad. And he was gay, man! <laughs> David and Jonathan were gay, okay? <laughs> David loved Jonathan as his own soul. Like, that's gay. That's gay! Okay? Don't try and tell me it's not. <laughs> David and Jonathan are gay. We're gay. Okay? Screw you. Strong enough, but no match for the powerful Philistine warrior Goliath. I mean, I mean, I know it's supposed to be Goliath, but Goliath. Bitch, I don't give a crap. The giant was armed with a sword and a club and I'm in brute strength. David had nothing but a slingshot, but he used his wits to defeat Go Goliath. How did he do that? By invoking the principle that something small can often penetrate large defenses. I thought it was supposed to be that God helped him. <laughs> like, it's like, ah, it's a very cool guy. And then there's a swim dude. This random I think he was like a shepherd or something. Wasn't wasn't David like a shepherd or something? And then he was like, Yo God, can you like help me kill this guy? The guy was like, Yeah, bitch. And then <laughs> That's exactly what God said. Yeah, bitch. <laughs> anyway. Uh so he placed a pebble in his sling, spun it in order to increase the speed and force, and flung the stone at the giant's face. The rock struck Goliath between the eyes and killed him. Of course, it helped that David was a get damn good shot, so let this be a lesson to you. Know how to use your weapons expertly, but also know when to use them. There's a time and place for every offense, no matter how small and no matter how big the defense. Snake smiled at the memory. He knew exactly what he had to do. So apparently David had like a brother named like Eliab or something. Fun fact! Fun fact! I don't know what I was going to say. But you know, I mean everyone knows about David and Goliath. If if you're raised Christian anyway, which I was. Voice. The tank roared closer as Vulcan Raven's voice boomed. We shall toy with you a little longer, Snake. Only when you've 
bad enough, I will deliver the killing blow. But I promise right now not to kill you. No, I'll just beat you within an inch of you. <laughs> I'm sorry. I need to play more Silent Soul, but I got to the first Sacred Realm. Or Silent Realm? Silent Realm. That's what they're called. And I died, and I was like, F this shit. And I pretty much haven't played It's not fun, okay? It's not... Oh, I had a lot of trouble with, like, the second freaking boss fight. I don't know why, but I did. You know, the big lava ball got Whatever. That's irrelevant. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. He on X Games, mother. Snake dived into the snow and dug deep until he felt the icy ground. Luckily, the snow was fairly soft, enabling him to tunnel his way toward the tank below the stick. <gasps> on his hands and knees. <laughs> what? <laughs> He could imagine what, how, what the Vulcan Maven must be thinking as the giant searched the field for a sign of his fate. The snake truly had become a creature close to the earth. But unlike his cold-blooded namesakes, the solid snake was a warm-blooded mammal. Wow, I thought he was a dinosaur. Oh, oh no. <laughs> Technical difficulties. It could withstand the frosty temperature below the snow surface. Get frostbite! Yay! Wonderful! Reach for my hand, I'll so wake into the <laughs> That was me trying to scream, but I'm not very good at screaming. Like, legit screaming. I, 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 I can't. That's patricide. Yup. <laughs> I don't know why that makes me laugh. Anyway. When the tank sounded as if it was rolling on its treads a mere few feet from him, Snake reached into the pouch and took out one of the frag grenades. Holding it firmly in hand, he stood, broke through the snow, and faced the oncoming juggernaut. He was at its broadside, about ten feet away. Gunner was in the turret next to Vulcan Maven, operating the smaller machine gun. He clearly heard the giant say, Is that him over there? The gunner fired a burst of ammunition at a target perpendicular to and 30 feet away from where Snake was standing. He'd fooled them. Snake pulled the grenade spin with his teeth, counted to five, and tossed the pineapple at the gunner. He then turned and ran, trudged rather, through the thick snow moving away from the vehicle. The ensuing blast, which must have occurred in front of the gunner's face, sent the man flying into the air. His lifeless rag doll body flop, popped on into the snow directly in front of <laughs> Oh my god, that's an amazing sentence. Plopped. Just plop. Plop. <laughs> Snake turned to see that a billow of black smoke now covered the top of the turret. After a moment, the dark cloud dissipated and Vulcan Raven's head jutted out of the turret. He appeared to be unharmed. Snake figured that the giant must have ducked into his compartment inside the tank just as the grenade detonated. Damn you! The shaman called. Snake turned to the dead gunner and quickly searched inside the man's fur lined coat. There were two more frag grenades attached to the guide's belt as well as a six sour handgun. Snake ignored the gun and took the grenades. As an afterthought, he went through the man's pockets and found a key card. It was identical to the one Anderson had given him a pan, only this one was Mike level 3. Brilliant! He stuck the card in his pocket and dived into the snow once again. Machine gun bullet. Wait. You cannot hide forever! I know where you are! Machine gun bullets strafed the drifts, coming too close to comfort. Snake's ears had worked the last time, but it wasn't close. It wasn't going to deceive the giant any longer. So instead of crawling forward into the snow, Snake retreated into one of the tunnels he created earlier. While the shaman ineffectually shot up the snow close to the avium, Snake put distance between them. Time for a new plan. He stood and saw that the tank was 25 feet away, facing south. A second gunner had joined Vulcan Maven on the turret. The shaman ran the larger machine gun and operated the tank while the trooper blasted the snow with a 7.62mm gun. Where is he? Where is he? Maven shouted at the gunner, find him! You let him get away! Snake had a clear shot at the turret from where he was standing. 
He drew the SOCOM, Sergeant Weaver stands, whatever the frick that means. Drew a bead on the gunner and fired. The man shuddered, cried out, and then slumped over the turret. Raven turned just in time to face an oncoming bullet from the SOCOM, but he eluded it with a subtle shift of his body. Snake's mouth dropped in surprise. The man was unbelievably quick. Snake figured it must have something to do with his allegedly alleged mystical powers. By then, the shaman had swung the 12.7mm machine gun towards Snake and let loose a volley of hellfire. Snake jumped into the snow, dug deep, and clutched the frozen ground. Clutch? He knew it was only a matter of seconds before he'd be hit. It was all over. He would die there in the snow-covered canyon. The terrorists would launch a nuclear weapon, and the world would never be the same. Yeah, because it's all NUCLEAR! <laughs> I'm sorry. But then the machine gun fire abruptly stopped. What had happened? Snake dared to thrust his head up to the surface to look. Vulcan Raven was working frantically on the machine gun. Since both of his guns were dead, the giant had no one to access the water. This was Snake's chance. With, using all the leg strength he could muster, Snake plodded through the snake thick snow toward the tank. As he ran, he reached into his pouch and retrieved another frag grenade. When it was 15 feet away, he pulled the pin and tossed the explosive onto the tank's treads. He dived sideways on into the frost, covered his head with the sand, and endured the repercussion of the blast. The reper like, repercussions of evil. Woo! <laughs> oh my god. We should read that here. We should. We should. We should definitely do that at some point. <laughs> This time he felt the heat and a bit of debris fall into the pocket of snow where he lay. After a moment, he hoisted himself up to survey the damage. The Abrams was immobile, and one tread completely blown off the wheels. It was time for the David and Goliath maneuver. He plucked another grenade from the pouch, slogged through the snow toward the rear of the tank, pulled the pin, and tossed it up at Vulcan. Raven, who was too busy struggling with the machine gun to notice that his fair was behind him. The grenade dropped in the compartment, a better bullseye Snake couldn't have asked for. Snake turned and trudged as fast as he could away from the air films. The explosion shook the entire canyon. But he somehow survives this. <sighs> Liquid Snake sat in the shadow of Moses Vector's office and watched his nemesis walk away from the burning tank. His nemesis. Dave doesn't even know who Eli is. It's okay. It's like... <laughs> uh, I'm trying to think of, like... It's like... I don't know, man. But, like, Eli's like, Ah, oh, you have my arch nemesis! And Dave's like, Bitch, I don't even know who you are. Who, who, who are you? Wait a minute. Who are you? <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. He, he sighed heavily and then glanced over at Revolver Ocelot. He was resting on a couch. Revolver, Revolver, o Revolver, Revolver Ocelot, Ocelot. <laughs> The gunslinger's right arm was heavily bandaged. The painkillers had done the trick, and now Ocelot was eager, eager to close the distance between Pop Sound and Snake. He got away, didn't he? Ocelot remarked. Let me try again. I'll kill the bastard. Liquid held up his hand. Quiet! He gestured to the screen. Folk and Raven could be seen, miraculously crawling out of the wreck and escape. He's still in range, the giant said. Shall I destroy him? Liquid pressed the button on his communicator to speak. No, let him go. Are you certain? But keep an eye on him. He got the card. I know. We'll play with him a little longer. Liquid stood and whispered. Are you mad? The man's dangerous. Liquid shot off a throttle that gave the gunslinger no choice but to sit down and shut up. Shut the F up and go to sleep. <laughs> Anyway, 
Vulcan Maiden said, You would do best not to underestimate him, boss. What did you think of him? Like what asked. In battle, that is. He is just as he said. It's as if he's possessed by a demon, much like you. I would expect no less, considering your relationship. <laughs> yes, I told you so. But don't worry, I will kill him. Is Ocelot with you? Yes. Revolver Ocelot, the giant gulped. I understand he took your hand and your dignity. <laughs> Watch your mouth, Shaman, Ocelot called from the couch. It was a blasted ninja that took my hand, but it was Snake who distracted me. I could outgun you anytime, anywhere. With or without my <laughs> Let me tell you something about our intruder friend. In the Sioux language, Sioux means snake. It's known as an animal to be feared. Ocelot see, sneered. Well, I fear nothing, especially Solid Snake. He is mine now. <laughs> when we meet, when we next meet, I will take special care of <laughs> Hulk and Raven spit. The raven on my head thirsts for his blood. <laughs> Snake and I will bow again. Of that you can be sure. Liquid switched off the commun communicator. He's a formidable enemy. The next several hours are gonna be interesting. Uh, also, not what do you hope to gain from him? What do you hope to gain from him? He's a pet. Swat him down. Not yet, my friend. I still have plans for him. Why do you let him live, boss? <laughs> the fox sound meters I spoke. I have five reasons. <laughs> anyway, that's the end of that. That's how I'll show up. That's my question. Uh, chapter 12. <laughs> it's just like one of my Japanese anime! <laughs> <laughs> Baby boy. Baby boy. Anyway, that's the end. If you like this, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!